You can enter the church, I should say, but before God, God said, before you enter into my presence, leave your gift there, whatever you want to share to me, go to somebody, and then reconcile to him or her. So when you stand before the presence of God, there must be holiness, consecration, reverence in your life. It is not the body that worship. It is the relationship, number one, to God, in your relationship towards your fellow man. If those all align, relationship to God has no problem. So before I can go up, Johnny, take care. Do you have some kind of ill feeling or some jealousy or some kind of envy or some kind of misunderstanding with your brothers and sister? Yes, Lord, okay. Okay, you're in the church, but I will not accept your offer. Go back, reconcile to them, and then come back. I will accept your offering. Ask forgiveness from me. That is a biblical principle. So it's very, very, very important. As you can see, living sacrifice, you die to your old self. And once you're living consistently by God's grace in a holy living, you are now giving your bodies as a living sacrifice. The word living is what? It is a constant, continuous living sacrifice. And then it goes on to say, holy. Now the word holy is a word that is designated like this. Every Sunday, we have this Bible. Every Sunday, we have this lamp. Every Sunday, we have the base for the flowers. Now, this kind of gift to the Lord, there are consecrated. In other words, God, I give you the Bible. I give you the symbol of the light or the light of the world. We want to be a light. And the flower or our appreciation to you. The blossom of the flower is living with the water. Now every Sunday that is being dedicated to the Lord. Holy. So the word holy is anything from the flowers to the Bible to the light. Anything that you give to the Lord that is consecrated. The word consecrated is set apart on that particular moment to be dedicated to the Lord. Set apart no kind of uh, foreign bodies or any kind of complication. It is clear and pure. So you can see here, when we serve God with our bodies, living sacrifice constant, perpetual. So every Sunday, we're giving our service to Him as a perpetual service. And God is not tired of receiving praises. Once a week is an honor. God, I can give you two hours. Son, thank you. And God is so happy. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Living sacrifice only. So, Paul is saying, guys, because of God's so many benefits, because of His mercy, let's go back to the mercy. The word mercy, in other translation, it means because of God's compassion, you have to give your body holy. In other words, now it includes your mind, it includes your heart, it includes your hip, you know, will, and then the spirit, holy. It is alive, follow me along this line. Now once you consecrate it to the Lord, God, you kneel down. Here is God in an altar of consecration, God, beginning today, Whenever you commit your, your life to the Lord, all or everything that is within me, from my future plan, to my family's plan, and to my body, and to my any aspirations, God, beginning today, I want to consecrate it to you because my life is no longer mine. I want to do the very best that I know, the very best that I can do for you because after all, I come to the realization you own me, you possess me. It is a joy, it is an honor to serve you with everything that I have. So that's what we call consecration. I want to go deeper. Now consecration, once you consecrate your life in the altar, when you offer your life, it is living, it is not dead. It is with responsive emotion, mind, and will. God, here's the life. It is all yours. Now, that consecration is a preparation, follow me, for the word sanctification. Pastor, those are words that is foreign. The word sanctification is, it is a process 
to the work of the Holy Spirit inside of you, He is the one doing the architectural work inside of you, changing your character, your attitude, your mindset into the things that is pleasing to Him. You will be surprised because your attitude, my attitude, my character, my dreams is now the dreams for eternity. That is transformation, not only church name, not going to church, but something is happening to a real church, which is the body of Christ. We, he is living inside of us. He is changing us. It's a process. So God is sanctifying us, consecrating us, to be holy. So every Sunday, every week, every moment of the day, holiness is not only on Sunday, it's gonna be on a daily basis. So later on you will say, whoa, I used to enjoy gossip, I used to enjoy to be envy, to be angry, or to revenge in advance. Later on, once they kick in, hey, spirit, you are old nature, I have no appetite with you, out in Jesus' name, you have no more, joy. It is foreign to you. Like a foreign body, once you come into the eye, to your eyes, it's painful. Wants to come here to your ears, etc. No more. I devotion a long time ago, my heart is for Jesus Christ. So, to be holy, you have, you have to do five process. Number one, you have to humble yourselves. In the New Testament, chapter five of the book of Matthew, we have what we call there the Beatitudes. This is what they call the ladder. You can see there the first ladder or step toward being a servant of God and be close to the Lord is blessed are the poor in his spirit. So the first thing for us to be holy is to be humble. Unless humility creep in, you cannot be holy. Because the number one enemy of, holy, uh, of, uh, of, of, you know, of humility is what? Pride. So once pride is there, God cannot do the work. The big monster, Satan, author of pride, has to be kicked out. Okay? And even to pastors, anyone, you can know a person, the more he grows, the more he's like a shadow. His identity is out. What you can see is Jesus Christ. That's humility. All he can speak is Jesus Christ. He is good. You're so good. You're eloquent. You're bright. No, it's the Lord who does the work in me. Oh, I know that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know it already. Not judging them, but from the riches of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, number one is humility. The Bible says, humble yourself into the hand of the mighty God, and then resist the devil, and he will flee. And then the Bible says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So, in the kingdom of God, there is no proud people. So in our prayer, in our fellowship, there is no one superior in, in very, very great man. No. The more you grow in the Lord, be, the more you become a nobody. The greatest of all is the servant of all. Amen? <coughs> Whosoever be great in the kingdom, be the servant of all. Yes, there's a song. Number one, humility. Number two, uh, we can see here, is confess faults one to another. <coughs> now, in the doctor and medical field, before you can enjoy the good circulation of the blood or some kind of malfunction in the body, the doctor will see to it that there is no plug, that there is no some kind of uh, problem in the sugar, in, you know, in the soul, whatever. They know the anatomy of man. In other words, any kind of sin is a symptom for us that we are sick. So there's very important number two principle is confess faults one to another. Confess your faults to your brother and sister. Confess your faults one to another. First step, if you're offended, if you're hurt. And then the Bible says, confess your faults one to another. Follow me along this line. Even the little boy or little girl, your son, Mom, you hurt me. Oh. And she's crying, he's crying. Say, honey, Daddy is not always right. Forgive me. He start to say sorry even to the little ones. That's the beginning of breaking some kind of sin in our hearts. So you really will creep in. So confess your faults one to another. 
Son, let's pray. Can you forgive daddy? Yeah. Well, let's pray together. Lord, I forgive my dad. That's the beginning. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Church, when the church is healthy, listen to this, it is just inevitable to know we'll have the fruit that become like a nectar that is so attractive to the bees. People say, look at those people, look at those people. They can see the beauty of Jesus Christ in your life. Because confessing our sins one to another, there is no hate, there is no revenge, there is no kind of, I'll kill him one day, I'll do something. Listen to this. 75% of sick people is cause of anger in their hearts in the hospital today. Angry hearts. Unforgiving spirit. And then, we, and then the next thing to do is, listen to this, husband and wife, church, pastor, anyone, easy to forgive. Oh, forgive one another. Okay, and be kind and forgive, compassionate, understanding. Forgive one another. And number four is, well, oh, oh, I'll do some extreme. I could not believe that some people, because of money, this is yucky, but Christian family, I love it. I've been praying for them, and God knows I don't want to magnify. When it comes to money, so yucky, it's happening because father and daughters and children and grandchildren, they curse each other. I, uh, I don't want to magnify the negative. That's me. I want positive. They are anger and they're pushing their pastors and their study master of divinity. Forget that masters. You have to go to the very beginning of humility. So wealth, remember wealth, is the idol of the rich nation. <coughs> and uh, so giving to the Lord is a problem even in the olden times. And God said they give money to the Lord, but it was not wholeheartedly. There was a man who followed the Lord. He said, Jesus, I want to follow you. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, and the Lord said, uh, have you obeyed the commandments? And he said, yes, I follow the commandments. Love father and mother and do this and do that. Okay, there's something lacking, the Bible says. It's talking about wealth. And, and, and the guy said, what is that, Jesus? I paraphrase. Since you are very rich, you have enough and you are young, I want you to do is sell all your property, then divide, give your riches to the poor. It is a test. And he goes on to say, and then come and follow me. I want you to hear, when the rich man hear that Jesus was passing, he ran. When he heard that Jesus said, give all the riches to the poor, he turns back, not running, but walking sad. And Jesus said, it's very hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is better for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Our money has to be controlled by God, and our money is owned by God. The Bible says, silver and gold are mine. Okay? A thousand cattle on the thousand hills are mine. If I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you because it's all mine. So our money has to be committed also to the Lord. Money cannot lord you. Money, I have to use you for God's glory. So wealth has to be committed to the Lord. Lastly, to become holy to the Lord. Okay, Lord, I want to follow you, okay? Okay, come follow me. Jesus said to that person, wherever you go, we're talking about rights, R-I-G-H-T-S. And Jesus said, if anyone would like to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever does not hate his life shall, okay, anyway, who loves his life shall lose it, Anyone who hates his life shall find it. Here is the thing. If you want to be holy to the Lord, your personal will, desire, ambition has to be entrusted into him. Once you entrust something, you're empty. And when you're empty, God is able to pour out good stuff to you. All your rights has to be turned over. That's the beginning. You can understand holy living. Amen.
Sal can conclude just one verse. <laughs> I thought the captains to I'll conclude this beautiful story about our life to the Lord. It's happened in in England. Queen Mary was with the children and then there was a shower. There's a sprinkling of water, so what happened? Uh, Queen Mary is stuck in the porch of one of the homes with the children. And he knocked at the door and said, can I borrow an umbrella? And the owner of the house looked at her. Now, Queen Mary, what, what she did, she had a hat. She covered partly of, of her face and then she wore just an ordinary clothes. So we cannot know that this woman is the queen of England. And then what she did, the woman of the house went to the attic and found an umbrella that is one of the ribs is broken and there's some holes. And then she came back and handed it to her. And she said, I'll return this tomorrow. That was the first statement, I forget. That was, can I borrow an umbrella? I can return it tomorrow. That was basically the word. And she got it. The next day, this is what happened. She had another visitor, a man with a gold braid on his uniform in an envelope in his hand. And the, the man said to the woman who, you know, the following day, the queen sent me with this letter. Here's the word. He said, and also the queen asked me to thank you, you personally for the loan of your umbrella. Here's the response of this woman. Stunned. The woman burst into tears. Oh, what opportunity I missed that I did not give her my very best. Then she cried. Church today, as we close, what an opportunity in this message of Paul. In view of God's compassion, present your bodies, everything, your family, your heart, your ambition, your time, your money, your rights, humility, present it all to the Lord because you'll be able to go to the next place. You can live holy, which means each one of us today, the greatest opportunity is extended you'll enjoy the life of being a vehicle and like a, a flower base here where God will bless you. Church, it is high time that the beauty of Jesus Christ out there, men will see. It will be real as you submit in His Word in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Father, we submit to you in the word of life. God, thank you. This is so profound, but it's real. It is understandable. And Lord, receive the glory. Receive the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>